It's Friday, January 14th, and the time for your body this today morning news update. Public health officials appear to be waiting to procure COVID-19 Pfizer vaccines suitable for children under the age of 12. Co-coordinator of the National Vaccination Program, Dr. Elizabeth Ferdinand, revealed that an order for thousands of first and second doses made around November last year has not yet reached Barbados. The discussions are still going on. We've looked at the possibility of getting vaccines for them. Um, we have, well, we've, we've tried to find out where we can get them from. We've placed an order. We're going to wait and see what happens. Right, because it's a different vaccine to what we have for the other children and the old people, older persons. We have children 5 to 12 in, in view, and we are trying to get source enough vaccine to cover all of them, both for their first dose and for their second. Countries are being urged to ensure health workers have access to protective equipment and additional COVID-19 vaccine doses where available. It's coming from Director of the Pan American Health Organization, Dr. Caricia Etienne, as COVID infections accelerate in the Americas and the Omicron variant is detected in at least 42 countries and territories. Dr. Etienne said that the region's ability to respond to the current COVID-19 wave depends on the personnel that keep primary health care centers, clinics and hospitals up and running. While death is still causing new infections in the Americas, based on current trends, Omicron is on track to become the dominant strain in our region. It also has led to a rise in reinfections, even among those who are fully vaccinated. This new wave of infections, it won't be mild for our health systems as the Omicron variant is already challenging our health workforce and limiting care for other diseases. In smaller island states, some hospitals were already strained by cases of the Delta variant. And now more hospitals face the prospect of being overwhelmed with cases. While Delta is still causing new infections in the Americas, based on current trends, Omicron is on track to become the dominant strain in our region. It also has led to a rise in reinfections, even among those who are fully vaccinated. This new wave of infections, it won't be mild for our health systems, as the Omicron variant is already challenging our health workforce and limiting care for other diseases. In smaller island states, some hospitals were already strained by cases of the Delta variant, and now more hospitals face the prospect of being overwhelmed with cases. A new United Nations economic report is forecasting growth for Barbados at 7.5% of this year and 3.3% in 2023. However, Chief of Global Economic Monitoring at the UN Department for Economic and Social Affairs, Hamid Rashid, is warning of a bumpy, if not perilous, road ahead for countries across the globe. Rashid was addressing the launch of the UN World Economic Situation and Prospects 2022. The report, which places Barbados as a high-income economy based on per capita gross national income, estimated that the economy grew by 1.5% last year, while global economic growth was estimated around 5.5% last year after a decline of 3.4% in 2020. The world economy is certainly in a very difficult spot, and the road ahead is bumpy, if not uh, what I would say perilous. We have significant challenges. What happened in 2021, we had a, 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 some rebound in the global economy, mostly because of an, uh, a pent up demand from households uh, were released. Uh, consumer spending went up significantly, investment picked up as well. And that pushed the global growth uh, to a sort of an unprecedented 5.5% in 2021. But that is glass half full, uh, not uh, or rather half empty, I would say, because it was mostly catching up of the lost uh, uh, growth in 2020. 
An 81-year-old man from Shannock's Christ Church is still without a roof over his head following the passage of Hurricane Elsa last year. When a Barbados Today team visited the area, Charles Weeks was resting in the only corner of the house that had covering left. He said that despite numerous visits from officials, no one had ever gotten back to him on how he could have his house repaired. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum and she has many comorbidities and I love my mom and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. Two regional developments now in Jamaica. Hospitals are under pressure amid a shortage of healthcare workers as the country continues to battle the COVID-19 pandemic. More from Television Jamaica. With the fourth wave of COVID-19 now in effect, it was only a matter of time that public hospitals across the island would begin to feel the pressure. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jacqueline Besesa mckenzie has announced that all major hospitals island-wide have reached 90% capacity. Errol Green is the Regional Director for the Southeast Regional Health Authority. We have seen an uptick in the absence of um, healthcare workers. Uh, I have met with my team. I've also consulted with the uh, Medical Doctors Association and the Nurses Association of Jamaica. And we had to put in place some steps and some measures. But hospitals are not only grappling with an increase in COVID-19 admissions. There's also a medical staff shortage. In Western Jamaica, clinical coordinator at the Cornwall Regional Hospital in Montego Bay says on Wednesday the hospital was operating without the service of 21 doctors and 46 nurses due to COVID-19. It means that we have to concentrate primarily on our emergency service. The patient who comes into the accident and emergency department that requires, you know, emergency care. So we concentrate our efforts into that, that area. The administration of the Mandeville Regional Hospital has revealed that several elective surgeries which were delayed due to the third wave of COVID-19 are now turning up as emergency cases. And finally, full global economic recovery from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic is still a long way off. That's according to the UN's Undersecretary General for Economic and Social Affairs, Lou Zimin, as he launched the World Economic and Social Prospects for 2022 on Thursday. After a deadly global economic contraction in 2020, Last year, 2021, was marked by global economic recovery, although it remains uneven and fragile. Significant progress in vaccinations, along with supportive macroeconomic policies in a number of countries, made this possible. With several economic activities retaining to pre-crisis levels. But, but, a full global recovery is still a long way off. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp.
We also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.